I can't play a single note on an instrument, and yet whenever I hear great music, I immediately want to be a conductor. But how difficult is it to be a conductor? Is it something you're born with? Either you have it or you don't? Or is there a science to conducting so that it can be taught and learned? Tonight we'll try to find out. The Modern Symphony Orchestra a vast assemblage of players united by the will of one man. The conductor is a towering, almost mythical figure today, yet what he does looks so deceptively simple. In reality, these graceful natural movements represent an extremely precise technical code, a polished language of signs that transmits an enormous amount of information to the musicians. The conductor is physically shaping the sound created by the orchestra as directly as if he were sculpting it out of the air with his hands. George Mester's conducting class at the Juilliard School in New York. Novice conductors study the difficult technique of the baton by leading the student orchestra through its paces. Four before A, please. The most basic skill the student must acquire is to keep the musicians playing together by beating time. The right hand performs the central timekeeping function, while the left operates independently sometimes cueing specific instruments and generally offering elaborations and footnotes to the main action. At one time, the conductor sounded out the beat by pounding his foot on the floor or clapping. Over centuries of refinement, the silent baton emerged as the most efficient means of transmitting musical details to the large orchestral group. But mastering the subtle movements required by this intricate sign language is a formidable technical challenge for the student. Okay. Can we try rehearsing bar 128? The musical score is divided into bars, and to keep the orchestra together, the beginning of each bar must be indicated with great clarity. The vigorous motion downward, called the downbeat, signals the first beat of each bar. To keep this motion distinctive, the student must learn to make it the longest vertical stroke of the sequence and to define its bottom beat point with firm precision. For each type of rhythm in music, there is a different sequence of gestures. One, two. 4-4 four, four time is a very common pattern that calls for straight, even strokes in all four directions. Down, left, right, and up. The time pattern is indicated by numbers at the left of the score. Here, 2-2 two, two time. Watch for the extra beat that alerts the musicians to the coming rhythm. One, two. This is one of the simpler patterns, just two strokes, up and down. But the student must learn to make them as distinct from each other as possible. Three, four time, lilting waltz time. One, two, three, one, two, three, The downbeat one, is delivered fast and forcefully with a whipping motion on the end. Six, eight time requires a more complex pattern of movements. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
A tiny flicking motion applied to the baton's tip indicates the precise instant of the beat point. The conductor is responsible for establishing not only the rhythm of the music, but also the tempo or speed at which it is to be played. However, keeping the orchestra's speed under control is a skill it takes time to master. It's not together. When you find yourself not together with the orchestra, you have to adjust sooner. You can't go your own way. Yeah. So you want me? I'm talking about a general principle. When the bus is going by and you want to catch it, you don't go like this. Nope. You run next to it. I want you to run next to the orchestra. If they're running away from you or behind you, you have to be in their speed first. Don't just continue. OK. So then uh, let them be, please. There are many other instructions in the score that must be communicated. The P stand for piano. The F's for forte, soft and loud. With his gestures alone, the conductor can transmit a wealth of information about the music's dynamics. Soft passages are generally indicated by smaller, lighter movements of the arms and hands. As the music swells in volume, the movements grow ever larger and more urgent. The left hand elaborates and reinforces the central message. In practice, there are often more complex nuances to be communicated in the dynamics of the score. Here, for instance, the left hand is being used to quiet one specific group of instruments in order to achieve the proper balance. The size of the movement clearly determines loudness, but an even more important influence on volume is the gesture's intensity. Besides volume, the conductor is also conveying other more interpretive qualities of the music. How the notes are to be articulated, for instance. The score might call for distinct breaks between the notes, staccato, or marcato, a similar but much heavier effect. Staccato is communicated with short, quick strokes that stop briefly on each count. Marcato is performed with much larger and more forceful movements. Legato is the expressive gesture that's used most often and indicates a smooth flowing connection from beat to beat. The motions are appropriately curved and gliding, though the student must take care to maintain the distinct outline of the beat pattern. Texture is another aspect of the sound that must be signaled through this rich, silent code. The aspiring conductor must learn to move the baton as though he were swinging it through a tangible medium, air, water, or molasses. The heavier the sound, the more resistance the baton should encounter on its route through the time pattern. Conducting teacher George Mester. How would you define conducting? I always ask anybody who wants to study with me the following question. I say, give me a one sentence definition that you would like to see in a musical encyclopedia. They will say something like, well, conducting is showing the composer's intentions. I say, well, a violinist can do that. So what's conducting? Well, conducting is making a group 
of musicians play what the composer wanted. I said, well, why don't you send them a mailgram? Yeah. So finally, eventually, they start realizing that conducting is a specific activity that nobody else does, and that is, eventually, we hit the one sentence which I like very much, and that is, conducting is the transmission of a musical impulse through gesture, period. All the other stuff is extra. Four before C. The transmission of a musical impulse through gesture. It's not nearly as easy as it sounds. Okay, imagine, hold on. Imagine this is a silent movie, mm -hmm. and you've got to show the audience how, whatever it is, the adjective you want to. I want the audience to be able to fill in, you know, like Family Feud, you know, we want to know. You know how many people think this is beautiful? <laughs> or ugly, or whatever it is that you want to make this. Turning your body into an expressive instrument of communication takes long years of practice. Yet there may be an innate skill that predisposes certain individuals to the baton. Music director of the Montreal Symphony, Charles Dutois. I think a young conductor actually should be able to express music physically. If there is such a thing as a body language, and I think there is such a thing. Basically, somebody who wants to conduct should be able to express something with his attitude, with his fingers, with his hands, with his arms. And then, if he has this potential, uh, then can study conducting. I don't believe there is any um, way to learn how to conduct intellectually only. See, it's a real physical involvement, obviously. You know, that's all we have is actually that, you know. We cannot show anything else. Rehearsal with pianos alone allows students to refine their technique with closer attention to detail. See, see the, prob the problem is you started with the right hand, then with your left hand you're not doing anything. It's not focused. It's neither in your left hand nor in your right. I see your eyes doing things, <laughs> but then why use your baton? You wanna, it's okay with me. You want to put the baton down, conduct with your eyes? No, I think I'll try the baton. It's not impossible. I mean, maybe that's the kind of energy you, that you have to do. Put the baton down. Do it with your head and eyes and see whether that intensity that you have to use to get it across, mm -hmm. you can then translate into the baton, okay? So no hands at all? No hands at all. Put them in your pocket. What it's all about is learning to express yourself with clarity and the utmost economy, making every single gesture count. Well, in conducting, uh, you have to be able to project exactly what you want, and the way you do that is by having your body under your control. What happens with young conductors is that their body is controlling them so that they can't help to kind of almost fall. They're off balance. They're not centered. When you're centered, everybody around you can sense that strength and the, the heaviness or the weight of your personality or your speech. As the student progresses, the basic vocabulary of signs becomes increasingly a part of his own body language. It's not together. If you can show it without talking, show it without talking. All these gestures, I find personally, um, in any particular phrase, I wanted to go just a certain way, I wanted to feel, I wanted to express a certain emotion. And it's just quite natural the body reacts in some way. It's sort of very much like an actor portraying passion or grief or anything. He has to do something. No, just 
Eventually, the silent code of the baton becomes purely instinctive, and a significant growth takes place in the conductor's physical authority. Let it ring. Let it... Sorry. The motor that drives this intense bodily exertion is controlled breathing. If you've ever seen, for example, a string quartet play, and they get ready to go and then go, bah. now, that particular motion, which is really a breath, what it does is concentrates your energy. It also shows the person to whom you're transmitting this information, shows how fast, how loud or soft, how thick or thin is the sound, how pointy or uh, spread out is the kind of sound you want. And so all of that has to be projected ahead of time by, by a gesture. And the gesture is energized by the breath. Three, four. of conducting must emerge out of an overall strategy for performing the music. A sudden change in tempo, for instance, must be signaled clearly in advance, or the whole thing can fall apart. You did not show them ahead of time that you wanted to do anything different. You have to cue a change of tempo just the way you cue an oboe. Okay, 4 before D, please. The job calls for acute mental concentration in addition to the tough physical requirements. I... That's not enough. It's not enough. First of all, the tempo that you just did was so much faster than anything else that you've so done so far that it sounds like a new section written by a composer who stepped in at the last moment. So you're having trouble not only demonstrating the change of tempo, but finding the one you want. Same place, please. What is really interesting is that the conductor has to function on two different le time levels at the same time. He has to listen to what the orchestra is doing in order to be able to help the orchestra fit into his concept. At the same time, he has to be ahead of the orchestra in order to bring in the orchestra or to prepare the orchestra for a particular event, like a, an entrance or a change in dynamic or a change in tempo. And both of those levels are going on parallel. And that's what makes it tremendously difficult to be a conductor, because uh, until you've had a certain amount of experience, you are either concentrating on what you want to hear and not hearing what's happening, or you're concentrating on preparing everybody and forgetting to hear what's going on. For the professional conductor like Charles Dutois, the demands on his intellectual capacities are enormous. At any instant, he must attend to a multitude of different elements in the swirl of musical details around him. For one thing, there's the score, with its bewildering diversity of instrumental parts to contend with all at once. 
Ça, ça va, ça, ça va aller. Passons au chiffre 21, s'il vous plaît. 21. 21. So what do I have in front of me? I have that big score with 40 different lines, all these instruments, and I have to read all these 40 lines together. The musician has only one of these lines. So how can he possibly know what, how it's going to sound? He will see a note and it's written forte. All right, it's forte for everybody, but forte for a flute is not the same thing as for a, a, percuss a percussion instrument or a trumpet or 60 strings. Now the conductor, doesn't read all these notes all together. It sounds impressive to see uh, 40, 40 lines, one, uh, one on top of the other. Nobody can really read everything, but we develop a synthetic approach, you know. Your eyes and your mind just go straight where things happen. <laughs> Over a 50-year career as a solo violinist, Ida Hendel has played with some of the most renowned conductors of the modern era. There are so many conductors and so many ways of conducting. I used to play, I played with the great, great uh, conductor Otto Klemper. Now, he, his uh, way of conducting was different to a lot of other people because there was very little movement, very little action. Uh, his actual conducting, as it were, was so economical that nobody ever saw any, any beat or hardly any. It was more like a hypnotic thing. He just looked at one of the musicians and they knew what to do. Once more for me, let's do before, before this double bar, one, two, three, four, five, six bars. Even among the student conductors, there's already an unmistakable individuality of conducting style that years of schooling won't eradicate. It is just some intangible quality of personal style that seems to account for the power of the greatest conductors. When I was... Um a student, I used to play in Luzern, in the festival, under the uh, baton of uh, Herbert von Karajan, who was teaching that summer. It's a long time ago. Now, you know, there were these young students coming, one after the other, and Karajan used to sit in, in the viola section with his feet on the podium, you know, with sunglasses and everything, intimidating everybody, you know. And uh, these young kids uh, or young conductors were trying to, to start uh, the, the Fifth Symphony, for instance. We could not just start that piece together. No way. No, with no way. And Karajan, after <clears throat> an hour or two, just stood up, you know, went to the podium and said, Die Fünfte. Then he had this baton, completely relaxed, and waited. Silence was unbearable, you know, tension. He waited until every single soul on this stage was concentrated just to him. It's just right here, you know. And then he could have done anything. It would have started, you know, because he had that kind of incredible confidence that it has to start. And he done. And then the whole thing it was a big thing. And everybody was completely surprised that such a thing could happen. You know. I learned very much from that, because this is that incredible concentration to such a degree that when something has to start, it starts. <laughs> Personal authority is matched by a powerful and expressive conducting technique. Then the orchestra is truly transformed into one great musical instrument. In the final analysis, this is the instrument the conductor plays.
It will take years of the most rigorous physical and mental training for these students to master the intricacies of the conductor's language. And in the end, as in all intense disciplines, the goal is to leave the technique behind. The first step is the technical proficiency, that is, the clarity of the language, musical language and gestural language. Then comes clarity of expression, and after that comes the moment when you forget all of that and just are making the music. You're just floating on air, you're almost aquaplaning. And as you get older, and as you work with an orchestra with whom you have sympathy, that becomes almost a mystical experience. Uh, the biggest compliment I can pay a conductor is to say, you know, I didn't even know you were there. That is the most wonderful feeling when you can make music and not be conscious that you have con a conductor beside you. That is pure bliss. <laughs>